This is Newsmakers Extra. I'm joined by Dr. Rola El Siraj, the director of the Center for Health and Biosciences at Baker Institute for Public Policy. We've been talking about, it's always a very sensitive topic. No matter, they always tell you, don't talk about religion, you don't talk about politics, you, def, you definitely don't talk about abortion. It's just not a good conversation to have, but it's one that's necessary now based upon what's going on with the Supreme Court and Roe versus Wade. We've been talking about all the things that relate to the medical part of uh, the necessity for reproductive health. And you talk about the medical, as medical professionals have an opinion about medical health, about the health of women as it relates to whether or not they have an ability to even get an abortion. Yes. Um, the American College of Obstetri Obstetrics and Gynecology, which is the leading professional society in this area and advocate for women's health, actually has released a statement stating that abortions are an essential component of medical care for women and uh, they are incorporated in the medical curriculum and training, the continued medical education and clinical practice. So restricting abortion um, and enforcing anti-abortion laws actually can be viewed as denying women access to what is viewed as essential medical care. How do doctors balance that? Because there are doctors who certainly have an opinion about this and may say, well, I just don't want to do this but medically it may be necessary. It seems to me that would be just a really difficult kind of challenge to balance those things. Uh, it is very difficult and, and I will say that we are currently operating in, under a climate of fear um, in the state of Texas. Uh, as we discussed earlier, it's difficult to find people from the medical community that want to even talk about this issue mm -hmm. uh, because for, for many reasons, because of the stigma associated, with, because now you can be sued by any civilian in the state of Texas for aiding any woman in the process of obtaining an abortion. Mm -hmm. um, what I will say is that it has been made clear and societies like ACOG that I just mentioned have made it clear that the best medical decisions, the for individual patients are made between the provider and the patient mm -hmm. without third party interference um, and without, you know, operating in a climate of fear. Those people on the other side of the fence would say, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. that's a life and from conception that's a life and no matter what you think, we need to go ahead and stop that. And that's where you're talking about there's this climate of, of fear, uh, apparently, but they're, 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 that argument is there. Absolutely, and I am not even going to touch on that argument. Correct. Uh, but what I am going to say is there's so many other factors that have to be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. A lot I just mentioned about a lot of the socioeconomic, the implications, but we know from scientific research that, for example, um, obviously I mentioned the maternal mortality rate, which is very significant for some women. And, uh, for example, women of color are even three times, we already have a high rate, they're even three times more likely to die from, from carrying a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that socioeconomically, women do not do well compared to women who have abortions when they carry their babies to term. So they're less likely to complete their education. They're more likely to be um, living under the poverty level. They're also more likely to be collecting unemployment. Um, we also know from medical research that the mental health impact um, is worse in women who've had abortions. And you're saying and, this... Uh, sorry, in women who actually have carried their pregnancies to term. And so you're, you're saying that this is based upon not speculation, but research that's been done. Yeah, and, and what I'm here today to do is really just to present the scientific research. Right. I, am, I hope I'm not uh, giving any opinion on this matter, right. but what I am talking about is what the health implications are for women with, this, with these laws. Yeah. And, and I just want to point out that when we talk about health, you know, people think it's just disease or presence or absence of disease, but we're talking about the social determinants of health mm -hmm. because health outcomes are determined by uh, socioeconomic status, environment, uh, food security, uh, you know, all sorts of, uh, in addition to physical and mental health. How have the uh, health outcomes of poor women been impacted by any of this? Because I notice I, I, whenever there's any a uh, story about an abortion happening, I always focus on a Planned Parenthood. And, and even though I know that they do those procedures there, they also provide care for women across the board that don't have anything to do with that. But a lot of those organizations are being shut down. Are, they, are those women finding other places to get the care that they might otherwise? Is there any research? No, I mean, what's happening in the state of Texas, of course, now is that women are forced to go outside of the state for abortions. And the majority of women who are having abortions, only about 30% of women having abortions right now are white. Everyone else is either Latino or African-American. 
and um, those, and then the majority of them are also of lower socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. So those women cannot afford to be traveling out of state. They can't afford to be leaving their jobs where they're not being paid for their leave, and they also have childcare responsibilities. And unfortunately, geographically, all the states surrounding Texas right now have some pretty strict restrictions. A lot of their abortion clinics have waiting uh, uh, lists and waiting times. So they really have to be traveling on either coast of the United States, which is expensive. So this is really predominantly a problem for women uh, minorities and women of lower socioeconomic Well, for me, it, it sounds to me like it's really a challenge, too, for you uh, doctors who are want to care for your patients and somehow or another, regardless of what the situation is, if they have to medic medically necessary, in a doctor's opinion, need to get an abortion, it's a diff difficult challenging time. Dr. El Siraj, thank you for your time this thank morning. Thank you for having me. Good luck to you as you continue on trying to make sure that um, what gets done is the right thing for women Absolutely. their reproductive health. Thank you. Appreciate being here. This is Houston Newsmakers Extra. Please share this with everyone you know.